Hello everybody, this is Sirik1983, and welcome back to Neverwinter Nights. Alright, let's finish off with Sharwin's Tale here, and then uh, make our way to the snow globe. I suspected you'd show up here soon. I'm glad to see I was right. So, shall we join up once more? <laughs> oh, I just love her voice. Alright, let's do this. Yes? Is there something you need? Let's talk, uh, continue your story from before. <coughs> Clear my throat here. Alright. Alright, I've thought about which story to tell you, Kel. It is an old one. The story of Tamorlin and the Song of Love. Sounds promising. I'm so happy you approve. Now, since you promised to be a good audience, be quiet for once. <laughs> Tamorlin was an elven bard, one of the most talented and famous from an age ago. At the peak of his life, he was happily married with numerous children. Yet still, he felt he had left something undone. He bid his children a tearful farewell one day, hugging his faithful wife, cl wife close to his breast and promised to return as he began the greatest quest of his long life. For decades, he searched for H Hanalee Selenil, the elven goddess of love. He called to her from her temples, walked the fields of Arvindor, serenaded her from the highest mountaintops. Just when he thought he could search no more and his thoughts turned to his long lost wife and children, Hanalee Selenil came to him at, la at long last. She was the most beautiful of elves, her eyes warm and clad in a gown of silver and gold. Thou hast sought me out, she spoke, and I have come. What dost thou desire of me? Tamorlin was almost overcome by her beauty, but still he spoke. Hanalee Selenil, he said, also called Lady Goldheart, the winsome rose, the mother of sadness. I wish a boon. I desire to know the true meaning of love, so that I may write a song to stir the hearts of mortal and immortal alike. Would you grant me this boon? The goddess thought of his offer and smiled. I am the three who are one, child. Perhaps perform a task for each of us, and you shall know the true meaning of love and be rewarded. Three who are one? Yes, the queen of Arvindor is the elven goddess Ingarad. She, but she is commonly thought of as three goddesses, three aspects who together are the one, the triune. Hmm, that sounds familiar to me. <laughs> one, of course, is Hanalee Selenil, goddess of love and the gold elves. One is Erdri Fainya, goddess of the sky and the winged Avariel. The third is Saanine Moonbow, goddess of dreams and the moon elves. Tamorlin readily agreed to perform the task, of course. That, however, I'll tell you another time, seeing as you interrupted it all. Oops. <laughs> oh, man, I love you, Sharman. <laughs> oh, come on, tell me now. <laughs> to be honest, I'll, honest, Kel, I've forgotten how part, of the, how part of the story goes. Let's just keep moving. I'll remember the rest eventually. <laughs> oh, man, she's yes. awesome. Is there something you need? Yeah, let's break off. All right, let's head back over to the drinking house, and I will meet you there. All right, let's head upstairs. Let's make sure I've got everything organized the way I want. Yeah, keep hold on to this because it's well unlimited use. So I use like three times a day or something like that. So all right, we're good. Let's do this. Hmm. And the second door on the left, and I guess this must be it. Let's take a look. The snow globe floats above the magical pedestal. Within the snow globe, you see small shapes moving. There are clear skies in the globe below below you, and a ragtag group of dwarves and are busily but busily busily butchering dryads beneath the warm sun. <laughs> Say that five times fast. Let's rotate the globe. The snow globe floats above the magical pedestal within the snow globe. You see small shapes moving. Snow is falling within the globe, and a small group of dwarves are being attacked by dryads. Alright, so yeah. Every time you rotate this, it'll switch back and forth between the dwarves and the dryads being the, the attackers. And the ones that are the attackers are the ones that are evil, uh, if you were to enter at that point. For this point, I want the dwarves to be the nice guys, so let's enter it now, with the, uh, with the dwarves being attacked. Whoa, hello. Alright, uh, let's go to the left. Yeah, I know the layout of this place rather well, so it's pretty simple anyway. So let's kill the dryads. Oh, let's talk to him. Come in, there we go. 
I'll pay ye! We don't see many strangers around here, but you ain't attacking me on sight like them dryads, so I guess there ain't no harm in talking to ye. Why are the dryads fighting with you? We're not for no one. Not really, at any rate. Them dryads is crazed. Kill them a thousand times and they just keep coming back for more. Uh, I want to ask you some questions. If you got questions, you re really should speak to Hod. He's the leader of our clan in our war with these damn immortal dryads. Immortal dryads? What do you mean by that? Them bloody tree huggers won't stay dead. Even the trees that get chopped down spring back up again. But they're not for beating us neither. Because we seem to be re reborn just the same. Can't explain it to you better than that. Maybe Hod can make it more plain. Where can I find Hod? Hod be in the northwestern area of this region. He'll not be hard to find, for sure. Just be careful in the northeast. There be the home of the immortal dryads. Alright, well, I think I'll go now. Farewell. Travel safely while you're in these parts. Tr danger be all around. Alright. Let's go. Bit more dryads. <laughs> Prepare to become run Sweet. And oh, there's Hod. Yep. Me name be Hod, leader of this dwarven clan. We don't see your kind around here much, but at least you ain't attacking us on sight like them crazed dryads. <laughs> There's something I can help you with. Uh, why are the Dryads at war with you? The Leaf Lovers cannot be reasoned with. They're mad, I tell you. They attack us on sight, unleashing their fey magic upon me and me kin. And yet in me heart, I wonder if the Dryads are the only ones to blame. I don't speak of it with me kin, but sometimes things are strange. Like I be having a dream, or a nightmare. In me visions, I see Dryads slain and their trees chopped down by me, me on kin's axes. Aye, tis enough to make me wonder if we dwarves have ever fallen under the same strange madness as the tree huggers. Have you always been at war with the dryads? Nay, I I think it I think it once it were different not well, long ago, though it'd be hard to recall not but bloodshed. Yet there be strange Im images haunting me haunting me dreams of dwarf and dryads standing shoulder to shoulder. I see another time when my kin and the leaf lovers both served a terrible master, slaves to a faceless shadow of evil. But the memories be dark as shadows in the heart of mine, the, in the heart of a mine. Maybe me thoughts it's, it, maybe, maybe me thoughts not even real. Aye, it truly seems my kin has always been at war with the dryads. I'll ask you some questions. Uh, so be it. The wisdom of me and my clan is yours for the taking. Though I don't know much beyond the, this endless war with them damn immortal tree huggers. Uh, immortal? What do you mean by that? Uh, you can never. Never end a war when the dead keep coming back. The dryads are reborn after every death, just as me own kin come back time after time. Spells of the dryads have ended me own life too many times to count, yet every time I reappear here, risen, healed, healed and ready to, do, to battle and die all over again. That's horrible. Me kin be no cowards, but, I, but a never-ending war be a terrible fate. The tortures and agonies of the dryads, magic be visited upon our souls with every death and rebirth. I cannot say how we came to be like this. This life be wrong and unnatural, but we know of we know no, no other way. War, death, rebirth. There be no escape for us. Uh, ask you some more questions. Um, uh -huh. What is this place? How can this world exist inside a snow globe? Snow globe? Ah, you're talking daft. The world is the world. Right enough, there would be nothing more to it than that. And the way of the world is war. A never-ending war with the tree huggers and their fell magic. Alright, let's try the, uh... Have you always been at war, or no? We've already asked that question. Well, it sounds like there's, uh, some sort of evil master, so, uh, let's, uh... Let's, uh, head out here and see if we can find the answer. Anyway, yeah, that's where they all spawn when, uh, whenever they die. Uh, let's head down here. Yeah, this is where you gotta go. So let's, uh... I heard something. Oh, well. Let's go inside. Okay. Sheathe your weapons, just in case. Let's take a look at this. Hod's journal. Let's take a look. This is the Journal of Hod, leader of the Snow Globe Dwarves. The final entry is of particular interest. The Dryads came at us again, using their foul magic. The fighting was bloody fierce, but at last we drove the tree huggers back. How many times did I die in that battle only to be reborn and slain again? 
Does it even matter anymore? Fighting, death, rebirth, fighting, it never ends. Sometimes in my dreams I see a different world. I see Dwarf and Dryad working together, allied against a common and terrible foe in a bid to escape this pointless existence. And I remember the fading echoes of a powerful talisman, a tool to free both of them Dryads and we dwar Dwarves, the Amulet of Ages. Is it a memory of a time lost or a hope for the future? If the Dryads would only listen to reason, then maybe. But they are mad and attack us on sight. The fighting will never end and this point pointless existence will continue forever. That sounds kind of rough. And that other one is actually just the uh, the uh, Dryad's version of it. But I won't take a look at that. Let's uh, leave that chest for now and let's head up here. And uh, our very first dragon. Let's talk to him. You are not one of my slaves. It is strange for me to see one who does not cower and flee in terror at my presence. I find your courage in dreams. Visitors are a great curiosity in my world, so I will forgive your intrusion. Tell me. Now, you could just do the uh, the tough way and just say, I'm here to kill you, Worm. You'd actually have to tell him to kill him, I think, two or three times before he'll actually attack you. But he is rather powerful, and honestly, the only way I would ever consider fighting him, and, you know, I'd, I would have to do the full buff of, so like the Rod of the Ghost, invisibility, everything along this line, pretty much, to be able to uh, take him down, you know, with relative ease. Uh, but there's a much easier way to do it. So first, let's... Uh, I am Kel Davis. I am searching for the words of power. Your name means nothing to me, male. I have been too long absent from your world, but the word of power, that is something which I am very familiar. There was a time when I would have snuffed out your existence for daring to even mention the word in my presence. But centuries of solitude have cooled the passions of my icy blood. We can tell you of this word of power if you wish, though its magic is far greater than anything your trivial intellect will ever be, will, will be able to comprehend. Yes, tell me about the word of power. The word is an ancient magic fashioned by the creator race that ruled the north before the time of manlings. Even I was not yet hatched when they vanished from the world. I was able to harness the magic of the word, using it to shape this realm, to give eternal life to my slaves, and to make my own body immortal. Where's the word now? The magic of the word sustains this realm in my own existence. It is never far from me. More than this, I will not tell you. The word is mine, and you shall never have it. What if I just take it from you? Then you would die in the attempt. Do not trifle with me on this, small one. The blood in my veins is thick with age and slow to boil, yet my anger is terrible once, un once unleashed. Uh, let's see something else, and, uh, well, who are you? Long ago, I was known as Mafelnose Cadenar. <laughs> Good luck with that one, guys, <laughs> and gals, in the old language. There was a time when I was known as Winterfang in the tongues of the manlings. But these names mean nothing now. They are forgotten and vanished from your world, as, I, as am I. Now I am the builder, the creator, the master. This realm is mine, and within it, and within it all bow down to me. Uh, how did you end up inside this snow globe? I am ancient beyond comprehension, even by the reckoning of my dragon kin. We worms are not immortal, though it may seem so to a short-lived creature such as you. When I first felt the fingers of enfeeblement creeping through my flesh, I vowed I would not sit idly by to await my inevitable end. I created this world for myself. It is a haven where I am safe from the ravages of time. What is this place? How does this, place, this world exist inside a snow globe? I cannot even begin to explain the magic I, magics I use to create this realm to a creature so pitiful as you. Suffice to say, this realm is mine, created using the ancient power of the creator race, bound in the word of power. Alright. And, uh, yeah, okay, back through there. Let's see if we can, uh... As we're now, uh, if there, is there nothing I can offer in exchange for the word? Can you offer immortality? The word sustains me. It is life itself. There is nothing you can offer in trade, mortal. And obviously, now you would, uh, you know, threaten to kill him. But let's not do that. I should go now. So, how are we? No, I don't want to talk to you again, man. You're too big. Alright, so let's uh, open this chest and see what's in it. Besides the trap. This is the Broken Amulet of Ages, if you remember the, uh, the little book we read. This thing is, uh, 
This thing, if you get it fixed and then you get it charged up, uh, you will be able to have a much easier time defeating that dragon. So let's go get it fixed. Now keep in mind, if you decide to go after and kill him, you will not be able to go back out here because, well, you've killed the dragon and, yeah, he was sustaining this entire world, so let's do it this way instead. Hi, me and the clan bid you greetings once more. Help you with, um, what do you make of this amulet? Aye, tis a pretty thing indeed, and it looks familiar, as if it were known to me long ago. You see the fancy written on the back? An old and ancient tongue, yet I can figure out the words. Tree and forge united to overthrow the master. This amulet was forged to hold great magic, but do you see how it be cracked now? Whatever magic it once had is long gone. Can you do anything to fix it? Hi, I suppose I could repair the crack. It'd be simple enough for me to cast a mending spell on it for ye. Stand back while I work me magic. There, the amulet be whole again, though it'd still be lacking the magic to make it a true artifact. Can you do anything to make it magic again? Me clan know the secrets of magic, eye, but only the power of fire, forge, hammer, and anvil. This amulet be, be forged to hold the power of, a, of tree and earth. The dryads have such power right, right enough, they could craft it for ye, but the tree huggers are huggers be crazed. Ye be a fool if ye try to speak to them as they attack ye on sight. So that'll be all I can tell ye about your amulet, I'm afraid. Here, nothing will go. Farewell, and there we go. Alright, so, how do we, uh, get it charged up when the Dryads will only attack us? Well, remember what I said before we came in here? Yes. You can turn the sides just as quick, easily as you can turn the snow globe. So, I will be leaving here, and uh, next episode, we'll, I'll head back in here after I've rotated it so that the, it's the dwarves attacking the dryads, and I will, uh, yeah, I'll meet you back in here next time. This is Sirik1983 signing off. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.